then I took a spin on it. Instead of asking who is my neighbor, ask whose neighbor am I? Now that will change the whole story. That will change the whole story. All right. So today I'm going to start on uh, Luke the 15th. And do you understand all over the world, whether they are Hindus or Muslims or Buddhists or that, they know story of prodigal son. They know it. But think of this, uh, it is the third one. There are a couple of more he said before. So this is a well-known, the scholars say this is gospel within the gospel. You can say that in four words. Lose, seek, find, and rejoice. Say it. There go your, in a nutshell. That's a skeleton. Let's put some flesh on it. Okay, so we're just going to read uh, today the first part. We are in Luke 15. I'm in a King James. Then drew near unto him all publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmur, start complaining. This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What manner of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not he leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it upon his shoulders and he rejoices. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Verse 7, And I say unto you that likewise, Joy shall be in heaven over sinners that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. We're just going to talk about that today and see. let us see how far we can go. Now, like I have always mentioned, I always taught you, let us find out the setting. Who is doing the talking? Who is in a crowd? Why are they in a crowd? What is going on? So, of course, Jesus is talking. Now, who is in a crowd? It says that all the publicans and sinners. All right. So, so... If you break it down, sinners was a, just a general term. Publicans. Now these were the Jews who broke the law and married the people of the land. The Gentiles the idol worshiper and not only that some of them uh, we call today probably they were all sell out meaning they said forget this Jew and all this thing we is going to make money and so they were all sold out to the Romans because Romans control the area at that time and now so they will like I taught you one time uh, they will collect the tax let us say you passing with uh, you, you selling something a bag of rice so the Romans say that you should pay ten dollars tax so the do over there look at you and say twenty uh, dollars Meaning, he will give 10 to the Romans and he will get him uh, 10. 
Now, wouldn't you hate him? Don't look at me like them. The... See, our problem is this. We, we, we don't put ourselves in there. What would you do? What would you do? And you remember the story, I believe it is in Luke the 19th chapter and talk about uh, Jacchaeus. You remember him? He was a tax collector. And then the guy was going to say, uh, Jesus, it's, it's like this. Uh, if I have. No, come clean. What do you mean by if I have? If I have done wrong. <laughs> How did you get that big mansion? Well, the Jews living in a regular, uh, you got a mansion, you drive a Cadillac? Oh, no. Uh, he had a two home camel, probably. Everybody had one home camel. <laughs> Smile now. Come on, you all. You haven't seen me since. The... <laughs> you missed me, didn't you? There you go again. Are you crazy now? So they just hated him. Not there. First of all, they hated because the, remember I, I always have told you. Like when I told you the story in Luke the 16th chapter. About, huh? The Jews, they thought. Because they are net natural descendants of Abraham. They thought heaven is guaranteed. They got a corner in heaven and uh, uh, they're all right. Number two, so it is just like this, all right? I'm just going to play, not that you are. Okay, so you here you are Pharisees and Sadducees and here are, are publicans and all that. Huh? So these people looking at themselves, unclean. And these jokers say, hypocrites. No, you didn't hear me. Do you, do you see the crowd now? What is going on? The Jews hated them. You are unclean. You remember the story? Samaritan. I told you that last Wednesday. We have no relation. We have nothing in common. You all sell out. Sell out on God. And sell out on your brothers. So this group. Unclean, unclean, traitors, traitors. And one of the scholars say they treated them like a sewer rat, meaning, uh-uh. And they will look at them and say, you are hypocrites. Okay. So this one is going on back and forth. Not only that, Jews thought. That they can never repent. Meaning they don't cross that line. And there ain't, ain't no repentance for them. And for them, uh, we don't need to repent. Because we is all right. So see the crowd? These people are pointing finger at them. You are going to hell. So the whole story is. The attitude of Pharisee. About the concept of God. How does God look at this situation? And then. Jesus' attitude towards these people. Remember any time Jesus say they were all there, Sadducees and Pharisees, and Jesus will preach. Uh, look here, look here, look here. Uh, if, Jesus, if Jesus was like me, I preach like that. I'm talking to the sinners, huh? I say, uh, you, you have heard. Did you hear me? Did you see me what I'm saying? Uh, you have heard. You have heard. You have heard. But I say unto you. Don't be like them. Do what they say. But don't do what they do. Uh -huh. 
So this group is going on now. And now why is Jesus telling this story? As a matter of fact, for those of you who are taking notes and studying, you know, one of the titles that the Pharisee and the Jews gave him was a friend of sinner. What an awesome title. He was called the friend of sinner in Matthew 11, 19, Matthew 11, 19, Luke 7, 34. So this group is telling, oh, he's a friend of sinner. And now we got the issue. He said, watch it now what is going on. They're saying, we don't even shake hands with these jokers. We don't even ride in the same cab with them. We got nothing to do with them. Because we are on our way to heaven and they are all hell bound and we have nothing in common. You remember in Luke the fourth chapter, the Samaritan woman was telling Jesus, is I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Samaritan and, and you are a Jew and we have nothing in common. Why are you even talking to me? Meaning, this group would not even look at them, would not even shake their hand, would not even talk to them. Sound like some of the Christians today, don't it? We all that. We don't talk to the alcoholic. We don't talk to the drug addict. We don't talk to the gangbanger. We don't talk to the people who are divorced. We don't talk to the adulterer and fornicator. Mm -hmm, we is good. If we ain't going to talk to them, how are we going to give them the good news? I believe that was the last commandment of the Most High God. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, including the sewer rats, including the publicans. So now we got an issue. Jesus is a scholar of all the scholars. And he knows. In John the second chapter, I believe, he said that. And he didn't say much because he knew what was in the heart of the man. So he can just look at the crowd and figure it out. Okay, I believe I'm going to say this today. So he's studying now. Here he got these 12, uh, about to say 12 idiots, his disciples. He ain't got no clue whether they're coming or going. They're always hungry. Is we going to eat? As a matter of fact, they were so hungry between the two services. Between 11 and 3 o'clock service, they were going to the field. They were so hungry, picking up the uh, corn. <laughs> and this joker, uh, remember this joker, they're following them. He said, hold up, Jesus. Uh, uh, why is your disciples eating? It is law, it's uh, unlawful for you even to come and grab some wheat and corn and eat. They're breaking the law. See how the stage is set? But we just, we just don't even examine. We just read it. And you just say this thing. Okay, I had my morning devotion. Get away from here. You don't have no morning devotion. You're just a religious nut. Read your Bible. So, oh, I feel good. I had a good time with the Lord. You better go home. This is the one comment I always get. He said, we read this thing and we read it. And until you start telling, uh, we didn't read it. We ain't got no clue. Look at it. I've been talking for almost uh, 12 minutes. And we haven't even started yet. So this is what is going on. Sinners, self-righteous. Nothing in common. Now, the Jews were following him. And if you study the Luke, the 14th chapter, uh, he was uh, telling another story about the feast and uh, nobody came. So Jesus said, what is in Luke 14, 21? Uh, he said, now go out and bring the poor, the crippled, the blind, 
and lame. Meaning what? Bring all of them sinners. Now watch it. Don't just miss it. Let's just read it. Then drew unto him all publicans and sinners. Listen to this. For what? To hear. Isn't that interesting? Sinners are willing to hear and his people are not willing to hear nothing. Oops. They, were, they came to hear. And his people came to trap him. Let's go see how we can trap him. So remember, uh, what should I do to inherit? Who is my neighbor? Uh, how can I inherit eternal life? Come on. That's why I say, I'm the happy, he, uh, happiest man when I'm talking uh, to the cutthroats. You know why? Because what you see is what you get. Because when I'm talking to the Christians, they pull out their religious card. I read my Bible. Get away from me. I praise. I give my tithe. Uh, there is a chapter about you in Luke the 18th chapter. <laughs> you remember Luke the 18th chapter? I know I'm all over, but I just want to put a point here. People ask, why do people go to church? They go to 300 people go to church for 300 different results. Number one, if I won't go, uh, he's going to give me a look next Sunday. Where was you? Uh, is that a good reason to come to church? Then I'm going to look at you. If I won't go, somebody from my fellowship is going to call me. I come to church because I got a new suit. And when nobody gives you a compliment on your new dress, you get upset. Nobody even seen me. So you stay home two weeks. <laughs> What's wrong with us? And then we come here and she gets the mic. I love you. Shut your mouth. It's quiet here. Why are you coming to church? Bible says, all, read it and look the fifth chapter. It says, all these heathens, the sinners and publicans, came to hear and to be healed. Now I'm going to answer a, mil no, a, a, a billion, billion dollar question. You ready? People always ask me this question. Pastor, I say, yes sir. I read your uh, biography and you travel all over the world. I say, yes, sir, I do. Uh, you see a lot of miracles. I say, yes, sir, I do. I see the blind. I see the lame. I see the deaf. I see all these things. Uh, uh, why we don't see in a church here? Why don't we see in America? I am giving you the answer why we don't see. When you go to Africa, all the Hindus and all the Muslim and all the Buddhists and all the people from the country, they come, they have nothing. And you preach, God loves you. He has forgiven you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. And they will line up. Why? They came to hear and to be healed they get healed. And here you come. Here come Christians. Oh, why are you here? Mm, I don't want to be healed. Because if I be healed, uh, I might lose my check. If I do, I might have to go get me a job. If I do this, uh, people won't call me. Nobody will bring me a chicken noodle soup. Nobody will give me flowers. Well, stay in a bed and die then. Uh, that's what would be my attitude. But I, I can't have that attitude. I'm a pastor, so I say, oh. <laughs> but do you see, do you see the very first word? All the heathens came to hear what he got to say. 
And Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So they hear the faith come and they are born again. The whole story, the first one about the sheep, second one about the coin, third one about the true prodigal sons. We will work that later on. Is about this. Jesus will say later on, there is joy in heaven over one who repents rather than the one who thinks they don't need no repentance. Church are full of people who think they don't need repentance. People on TV, people all over the world, they're saying that, you know what? Jesus done it all. He paid the price. And I can live like the way I want to. I don't need to repent because it is all under the blood of Jesus. How dumb can you get and still be breathing? And people buy this. That's why churches are full of people. They don't want to hear this. Jesus said, there is a joy in heaven, man. Some repent. And you go to churches and people say, live the way you want to. God, dream a big dream. Uh, oh, yes. You are an adulterer. You are a fornicator. You are a thief. And you're going to dream a big dream? And I'm going to hustle you? And sell you my God? And people pack. And somebody like me come and preach a message. No other woman. Uh, they want to kill me. No, folks. No. He paid the price, but the grace that you have received must teach you how to deny all ungodliness and live right. I'm not saying live perfect. Hello? But you ain't even giving your best shot. Hiding. Yeah. Enough. That's my weakness. No, that's not your weakness. That's your chokehold. Hiding under my weakness. You be you be speaking in them for 20 years and you still hey, that's my you better go on before I slap you upside your big head. Do you understand? We pull out our religious card in a second. I ask you a question. Everybody knows when you was born again. But do you know the day when you fell on your knees and say, you know what? This is it. You are my Lord. We don't know those days because he is our savior, but we have never made him our Lord. You're still running the show. You're still on the throne. Oh, it is so quiet in this Methodist church. Lord Jehovah, help me. And then preachers don't help you. God loves you. Yeah. But he told you. So this thing is going on. These people looking here. What you are here for. Have you ever looked at somebody in a church and said, what is he here for? I know him. I know what he does on the street. But nobody knows what you do. In your mansion. In your man cave. Somebody take me home before I can clean all the thing in here. Why are we so quick? To throw people away. That's the one thing I have said from the pulpit and I say it again and again. I never throw anybody away. I don't care what you do. Talk against me. Tell all the, I will still love you. I still will pray for you. Go on. You know why? Because I know God doesn't throw me away. So who am I? We are all struggling. We are all men and women under construction. But woe unto the one who say, I don't need no help from God. I have arrived. Nobody is there. We all need help. So please be patient with the people who are struggling. We get up a big old King James Bible and beat them over their head. No. So now you've got the stage. 
All right. Now, so Jesus said, all right, I'm going to fix this. He's smooth. Oh, I tell, I love it. Verse 2, and Pharisees and scribes uh, complain. This man, did you hear me? This man, the sinner said, Lord, Master, Savior. And these people say, this man, huh? 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 I'm a friend of God. Shut your mouth. We have brought him down from heaven and make him our homie. He is not your homie. He is Jehovah. God, Lord Almighty. He is not. Amen. There is no fear of God in the house of God. And somebody like me come and say, man, He's an old timer. I done told you. I done passed old time a long time ago. I'm an ancient of days. Amen. Like the Lord God Almighty. Do you see? This man. Whoa. Whoa. No respect. This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Mm, 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 mm. 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 Meaning Jesus with an open arm, he hang around with them. Eat with them. You remember Peter? The Jew? See he was free but he wasn't free indeed. In the Acts the 10 chapter. Uh uh don't be telling me to eat this. We is Jews. We don't eat this. Uh. And God had to jack him full. Oh, he did. Yeah the full. Uh, what I have clean. Don't say. He's unclean. Can people look at you and say, why is Pastor Stephen still hanging around J11 after 20 years with a guy who just killed three people? A child molester. Come on, folks. Pastor Stephen, you preach to five million and you go over there and, and, and this trash? Yeah, that trash is somebody's son. That trash is somebody's daddy. Come on, folks. Why are we so arrogant? Uh-uh. I love to go to Gilchrist. And sometimes, we don't like them to come here. Huh? You don't, you don't want them, the kids to come here? I pray their house is next to you in heaven if you make it that far. I done told you. We want cookie cutter people. They must look like us. They must dress like us. They must know hallelujah, praise the Lord and, and chant that they will speak in tongues. No, and when they come like that, oh, why are they here? Why are they here? Look at the nappy hair. Look at them. Look at them. They stink. They, they musty. Look at here. They haven't taken a bath. Have you ever thought? They don't have a water? Because water got cut off? Have you ever thought? There ain't nobody there. They're living with grandma and grandma is, is paralyzed or, or, or that, that they cannot. Have you ever thought they don't have a soap? Have you ever thought they have no light? Have you ever thought they have no pair of uh, other jeans? Have you ever thought uh, when they come here, why do they eat like that? Have you ever thought that was the only meal they ate? And you come here, we have an audacity. I love you, Lord. Wow. 
let me tell you something last thursday yeah last thursday i was with the boys eating and my boys they got promoted by just the thread all of my boys on my table you know what one guy the biggest trouble maker you coming to my promotion aren't you i say yeah baby when is it tuesday i call as soon as i left the gilcrest school i call lily from the parking lot of gilcrest i told lily change my appointment tell that man i will not see him th- uh, tuesday at nine o'clock she said why i said i got to come and see this boys i changed that appointment he's going to come and see me tomorrow he can come and see me anytime he got a car and i walked inside you ought to see that boys like jesus came to their graduation and they just did that's the only jesus they know that's the only jesus they know what would have happened if i didn't show up let's not just talk about loving people are hurting they are bruised they are abused and you know what we don't care because we good we got a nice house we got a nice car we smell good we look good our freezers are full our bank accounts are full we don't have to worry about it summer is coming we plan a summer vacation and these little kids don't even know whether they're going to get some food this summer or not Just think, what would have happened to those four boys if I had not showed up? And that's on Nicole Johnson. She said, whoa, you here? I said, yes, ma'am. The boys asked me to come. The guy didn't have their daddy. Four of them, their daddy is in a jail. Come on, folks. we preach about the gospel you so good you want to keep coming pastor that was awesome revelation what do you do with the revelation besides getting fat your head is so big i have to put a triple door in the front so you can get in here when are we going to start caring folks covenant family church oh no what it means loving the unloved reaching the unreached touching take that sign down take it down folks and this is the situation so jesus is talking now say how you read this he is talking now and he speak this parable look here <laughs> you ready for this in the other one he say and there was a certain man and there was certain this look here he just hit them upside their head he say uh, uh, what man of you did you hear me huh? he ain't looking here no more he is not looking on this side he said i'm uh, since you want to complain uh, which one of you oh come on folks which one of you because he had jacked them before also when he had healed somebody in a look the 13th chapter the woman who was bound bound by the demons and the lord healed her and he said this child of abraham he said you untie your donkey i mean he was just working them over and over over and over over and over so he telling them it's not a story meaning fool start thinking i'm is talking about you yeah. sometime in a church i'll be preaching and i know what i'm preaching and people will be smiling as if i inter- and i said girl that's you i'm talking about don't be look lord jehovah help me and they just do like this uh, pass it on somebody else not me that will fit you to the t when i get through with you 
Oh, let me finish this story so we can go. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And my interesting thing is this. Uh, Jesus was a carpenter. But did you know, he never said nothing, no story about carpenter. So was he a carpenter? Or was he a shepherd? I'll let you figure it out. Now watch it. Now so, you all of you are scholar, so you have to do some studies on your own because I don't have much time. Read Ezekiel chapter 34. I'm going to summarize that in the Pastor Stephen's translation. And thus saith the Lord to the shepherds. Shepherds of Israel. He said, when you are hungry, you go in a barn and get the fatted lamb and you roast them and you eat them. When you are cold, you go in a barn and shear the wool and make a nice girl. But when one of the sheep is sick, you don't go take care of them. One of them is lost. You are enjoying your feast, but never go to help them. You know what you do? You go and drink the water from the stream. And after, listen, look, everybody look at me. He's talking to the pastors. He's talking to the shepherd. He said, when, okay, there's a little stream going on. And he said, you drink the water from it. But after you drink, drink the water, you know what you do? With your feet, you just muddy it. So nobody can come and drink after you. Read it. And you call yourself shepherds. He said, woe unto you. I'm against you shepherds. Jeremiah said the same thing. And that's the reason Jesus had said in a John the 10th chapter, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. Shepherd lay down his life. But you know what? You so self-righteous. You rather enjoy your 99. You know what is about the whole story is about? About the value of human beings. Meaning what? You don't care for them. They are helpless, hopeless. They are worthless. You don't put no value on them. But as far as God is concerned, we are all. <clears throat> we used to sing a song when we were little. God loves the little children. All the children. Huh? So, so what happened when you become grown? What happened to us when we grew up? The yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. So they were precious when they were little. When did they become trash? And you think you all that? Just because nobody knows your business because you sure can hide behind that hypocritic uh, Lord, I'm going home. We can put on a show, folks. We can put on a show in a house with the best of. We know when to say hallelujah, praise the Lord. We know when to fall down, when we know to run up. We know what to do. We know to quote the scriptures. You can quote the scripture, but can you leave the scripture? And he's telling them, I got six minutes. He said, which one of you having hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not he leave 99 in the wilderness? M meaning what? Here's the bottom line. One is gone. And if you don't know the structure, how it is work, you think that, wait a minute. Uh, who was keeping the 99? Uh, uh Go back in the first king, what is the 18th chapter about David? When he took the bread and the butter and milk and to came to see the boys, he gave the sheep.
to the other. So they always have a senior shepherd and they have a couple of junior one and they all keep an eye on it. And junior came and said, hey doc, uh, one of them is missing. He said, good, take all 99 and I'm gone. He didn't send a junior one. He went. And see, American culture, we don't understand, but the way it is, uh, like when I was growing up, huh, uh, my grandfather had some goats and all that. And so there are shepherds. So they come, and, uh, and before the harvest season, before the season come, he say, hey, how many you got? Oh, I got 20. How many you got 30? How many you got 40? How many you got? I say, okay, me and my boys, we take care of them. We will take them to the pasture, and, we, and then we will feed them and all that, and then you pay us and all that. And so it was not this, it was a whole village sheep. And so the responsibility on, on this thing is because if you lose one, uh, no, 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 no. He goes, meaning what? The sheep are dumb and they were in the dangers of the whoops and coyotes and the lions and the bear and all these things. He said, I don't care. You all go home, you all go home. I'm gone. And he went in and loved me. He went everywhere and he found it put it on his shoulder and brought him and the whole village is waiting the whole church is waiting the whole village is waiting the whole village is waiting and Curtis said Ronnie man my ship is gone I hope you find it just hold on hold on hold on and before you know bah, here he comes here comes the shepherd he's not dragging the ship the ship is tired. Ship is wounded. Ship is bruised. Ship ain't got nothing going on. It's like, come on, baby. I got you. I got you. I'm strong. I'm strong. I will carry you. When was the last time you carried a ship? When was the last time you carried a sinner? Instead of talking about it. And they all say, whoa, here he comes. And he came. And say, come on, Curtis. Come on, Ronnie. Come on, Lily. Let's do this. Meaning what? Let's just celebrate. Let's just celebrate. And then Jesus looking at them. He said, this is what I'm talking about. Huh? Uh, you all party, but you don't know what a party is. A real party is when uh, somebody carries a sinner who is so tired, heavy burden. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28, come unto me, all those who are heavy laden and tired and weary. You cannot walk, but somebody will carry them on their strong shoulder and they will bring. When was the last time you carried a sinner here? You barely come. You barely come. I'm mean, just too tired. I'm too worn out. That's what I say. Huh? Church don't grow. You know why? Because we don't care about sinners. Pray for me. I can hold on to there. You better shut up. You've been holding on for 60 years. You ain't even serious that, that you will make it to heaven. Why don't you make up your mind and say, I'm going to go to heaven no matter what happens. And now I'm serious about my salvation. Let me go and get somebody. Let them carry there. You don't have to bring it on your shoulder. Put it up in your nice Cadillac and nice Lincoln and nice SUV. Bring them in here. And Jesus said, there is heaven. Joy in the presence of God. You know why? It is not God's will that anyone should perish. And as far as they were concerned, their attitude was God rejoices when a sinner dies because he is out of the way. That's how they thought. But Jesus said, you have heard, but I say unto you, there is joy in heaven over a sinner repenting. Would you join joy of heaven? And it, listen, there's a joy in heaven, but the switch is here on the earth. The switch is here. You flip the switch and there is a joy there. Huh? But there ain't nobody flipping the switch. 
Because me and you should be there. We're going to make it to heaven. Hey, pray for me. I'll hold on. You better go on. Father Lord, we thank you that you loved us so much that you came and died for us. Father God, give us compassion. Help us to get out of us and start caring for someone else and become a friend of sinners. Thank you, Father.